everyone. Welcome to this episode of eCoffee with Experts. I am your host, Matt Fraser. And on today's show, I have a very special guest with me, Samantha McDaniel. Now, Samantha is a dynamic and driven social media consultant who specializes in helping small business owners maximize their online presence. With a deep understanding of the ever-evolving digital landscape, she uses her expertise to craft effective social media campaigns that drive results. In her free time, she is an avid traveler and, not, and, and loves nothing more than exploring new places. Whether it's soaking up the sun in Jamaica or experiencing the magic of Disney World, she is always on the lookout for her next adventure. She also values spending quality time with her friends and family, often escaping to their condo getaway for some much-needed relaxation. In addition, Samantha has a passion for fitness, which also plays a big role in her life as she is a certified fitness instructor and teaches a popular class called Body Pump, which is a low weight, high rep body workout that is perfect for anyone looking to improve their overall fitness level. With her positive attitude and infectious energy, she encourages her students to push themselves to reach their full potential. Overall, Samantha is a well-rounded individual who is dedicated to making a positive impact in the lives of those around her, both professionally and personally. Samantha, thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I love to yeah, be here. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. So, hey, Samantha, uh, how would your college professors or university professors uh, describe you as a student? <laughs> I was the typical student. I sat in my seat. I did what I was told. <laughs> yeah. I was a good student. <laughs> well, that's awesome. What did you study in uh, university? Um, I actually got my degree in elementary education and oh, right. I, I did. And I also um, got certified to teach uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. Usually it's just K-6, but I got oh. certified to teach kindergarten through 12th grade um, oh, yeah. English and then K through six reading and then and then K through six everything. Oh, wow. And did you end yes. up actually going into the into the uh, did you actually end up teaching going into teaching? I did. I actually taught school for seven years. Seven years. Wow. That is so yep. amazing. It's, it's And so within that and, seven years, uh, I got teacher of the year twice. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so you were the perfect student and, and, and a great <laughs> yeah. teacher as well. Was that from the students or was that from uh, your peers? It was, um, well, they, they send in names. And then okay. the principals choose the teacher. Ah, okay. Based on, okay, obviously. And they probably take into consideration the opinions of the students and how well they're doing and, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So how did you first become interested in entrepreneurship? Uh, it's just something that I've always been interested in. Um, and, you know, I always thought when I was younger that teaching was yeah. my passion. That was what I was meant to do in life. My mother taught for 30 oh. years and I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, uh -huh. And I got into it and, and at, for the teaching part, I, I really enjoyed the creativity aspect of it. Yeah. Um, but the more I got into it, the less creativity we were allowed to have. And oh. um, it, we got to the point where it was, the teacher will say, the students will do, and it was very strict. And I kind of, I felt confined. And I feel yeah. like as far as entrepreneurship, you have the ability to be creative oh, and absolutely. really the sky's the limit. Oh, you took the words out of my mouth. It's <laughs> absolutely there. It's wide open for you. If you can provide value, if you can provide value to the market, and that's what it's all about, providing value and solving a problem, then the sky's absolutely. the limit, you know? So that's, Absolutely. that's pretty amazing. So that's a very, very interesting. So can you share your experience of, of starting Allura Media and, and any challenges you faced along the way? Absolutely. So um, ironically, uh, we launched Allura Media right in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I don't know, call me crazy. Bold. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I got to the point in teaching where I was like, I... I can't do this. I have to find something else to be a better yeah. outlet to where I could have more growth financially for my family, financial freedom, uh -huh. time freedom. And yeah. so uh, I came up with the idea of the company um, and I already had the LLC and everything taken care of in mm -hmm. December. And I finished my year of teaching and on my last day of school, I resigned 
told my principal I was leaving and I launched my company that day, which was oh, wow. May of 2020. So wow. um, it was, and we, they had stopped letting the kids go to school in March. So um, for, oh, wow. So from March, April, May, you were not even teaching. <laughs> well, I was, oh, you I was teaching, teaching, but you weren't, Zoom. yeah, but not, yeah, yeah, on Zoom. That's what I meant. Yeah, I was right. teaching on Zoom in the process of getting my company ready to launch. Um, so wow. we knew, we knew the time was, was rough, but I, I thought to myself, it's now or never. And wow. I just have to go for it. And if what yeah. I'm doing is online and that's where everybody was, then it yeah. had the potential to, to do well. Absolutely. That's yeah. amazing. Because I mean, I remember in December, 2020, you know, um, I was at a business meeting and people were kind of joking about COVID thinking that it wasn't going to reach us and whatever, whatever. And next thing you know, the next meeting, people are freaking out. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing you know, they're shutting the meetings down and they're totally online. And yeah. now they have a hybrid, hybrid approach where some are online and once a month they're in person. But anyway, um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people would not do what you did, which is quit <laughs> their jobs and start a business at the beginning of a global <laughs> pandemic. It takes I, I a know. lot of courage, but you, you obviously you thought about starting your business even before the pandemic started because, like I yeah, said, yeah, it, it was it was before December. it really came around. And so then you're like, just screw it, I'm just going to do it because the push for people online, like they say that they say that the pandemic. Here's an interesting thing. I don't know if you agree with this, and I, I if this is a political question or whatever, controversial, you can just plead the fifth. Um, they say that. The pandemic uh, had a 20 year impact on people, on students for reading and writing and learning. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea, but it regressed that for students. Like that's the impact that's going to have. But it also impacted the internet for e commerce sales. It accelerated it by at least two years. So all of a sudden, everybody's looking for. Who can help them online? All these small business owners. I know that I know it because I, I know what was happening. And even in marketing agencies, some marketing agencies were flourishing and some were faltering, uh, depending on where you were positioned at in the marketplace. So, so how did you go about getting new clients then? Like, how did you do that? Well, you know, I, that's why I thought I was crazy because when I, I resigned from teaching, I, I just jumped in feet first and I just kind of yeah. jumped in, not a clue what I was doing, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I just, I started, uh, you know, announcing to friends and family, my new business yeah. venture, um, mm -hmm. you know, created my, all my social media pages and put myself yeah. out there. Um, and I started with one client and uh, I worked with them for a while. And then I found a business networking group uh, okay. because, you know, as, as a teacher every day I would go in and I was in those four walls. All I knew was yeah. my students and the same people I worked with every day. And so I did yeah. not really know people in the community. Um, oh. And so I joined this networking group and that really exploded my business, especially uh, kind of starting out, not really having a name for myself at all. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so that, that helped a lot because those people go out and, and share your business as well. Yeah. So that's, well, that's, how, awesome. that's how I really initially got started. So through relationships, that's pretty cool. Really, yep. Relationship yeah, Relationship marketing. Absolutely. Hey, so as a result of switching from a teacher, to a social media marketing consultant, did, did you ever uh, experience the imposter syndrome? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, especially with just starting out, if you're unsure, you know, I, I was unsure, I was just starting out um, and I would look at all of these other social media managers, social media marketers, and I would yeah. look at what they were doing. And then yeah. my, my way of starting was, well, I'm just going to copy what they're doing. Uh, because I didn't know what I was doing. So, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so in the beginning, yes, I, I felt it uh, because I, I felt like, oh, I'm just going to get some ideas. But sometimes it it got very like, I'm just going to do what they're, do they're doing. So it took me some yeah. time to really navigate and find my way. But once I I had done a lot of research and I, and I took I took social media courses. So I got yeah. you know certifications in certain things. Um, mm -hmm. Once I felt confident with the knowledge that I had and then who I was as a person, as a business owner, and as a new business, then I, I was able to step away from it. And I don't really feel that anymore. Well, that's awesome. 
Was there a specific industry or niche that you found it was easier to target when it came to getting clients? Um, not necessarily. I, mm-hmm. you know, I started locally in my community. Okay. Um, okay. And then went, and so locally, I, I have a, a different clients in different niches. Um, and, and it is difficult because I do have to do a lot of research for each industry yeah. to be able to yeah. do well for those clients. Um, and then I also, once I started my Instagram and my Facebook, then I was able to really branch out nationally. Um, and so to me, if I have a local client, I try not to duplicate as far as social media management. If it's something yeah. else, SEO or websites, I can, I'll keep the same type of client or the same type of industry, but not yeah. locally if it's management, but I can do that nationally. But, um, you know, I, I do, I have a few restaurants that I really enjoy working for restaurants. Oh, and wow. I, yeah. Restaurants for social that media, would, but it's fun. <laughs> oh, so you're talking to a guy who worked in the restaurant industry for 14 years in 17 different restaurants in from, um, casual fast food, to fine dining. And so I totally understand restaurants. And if there's anybody that can be good or who should leverage social media is the restaurants. Like I, yeah. I could talk to you about <laughs> restaurant marketing for an hour. Uh, yeah. in fact, maybe it, one day I'm going to buy a restaurant. Myself. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You oh, do yourself through school. Myself. That's how I put myself through college. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. A lot of people did that. Yeah. Yeah. I should have yep. done that too. Uh, 14 years <laughs> is a long time. I could have got a darn doctorate. Um, but it's just so hard. It's so hard to get out of it once you're in something. Um, and to me, it was fun and the cash in your wallet at the end of the day, uh, you know, but anyway, so (laughs) I don't want to go back. (laughs) Yeah. Oh no, I would never No, My wife and I were in a restaurant the other day. I said, my gosh, uh, I don't miss this at all. Uh -uh. Um, anyway, that's neither here nor there restaurants incredible amount. I love eating. I love cooking, as I told you. And uh, restaurant marketing for social media is just it, it, like taking all the pictures of the food, the drinks, the, ah, there's so many things you could do. It's, it's amazing. Fun. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> so as a successful, you know, someone who's, who's gained some success, do you have any advice for other young women looking to start their own business? Yes. Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> do like, it. Like That's says, my advice. Just do it. Just do it. And, you know, for the longest time, I always worried, what will people think of me? You know, for whatever business that it is, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. You do what's best for you. If you want to be yeah. an entrepreneur and dabble and figure out what works, you might, you might fail at five things, but you might find the sixth thing at 40 and it'd be the best yeah. thing you ever did. So d- do yeah. it. Don't quit. Don't stop. I mean, it's, it's worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I, I would say the exact same thing. Don't quit. <laughs> just don't quit. just do it and don't quit. Um, does it help to have like, um, obviously your spouse was able to support you. Like, um, did you make sure you had like, I mean, some people start a business with 30 bucks in their pocket and they just go for it. And other people are scared of not having the uh, resources as a, as a, safety net. I mean, I I talked to one guy, he's a a machinist and he came to Canada and he was like, screw it. I'm going to start a business. If I go bankrupt, I go bankrupt. He doesn't care. Uh, No, he did not go bankrupt and he became very wealthy. And uh, another guy became a powder coating business, powder coating pipe for the oil field and, Uh you know, reached seven figure success level doing that. But, you know, sometimes they just start with nothing. So like, would, what about that? Like, do you, do you, do you think people should just do it? No matter the, the, no matter the circumstances, just do it. Like if you like, you were obviously unhappy being a teacher at, you'd reach a point of frustration, I would say, based on what you've said. Um, would you, would you like advise people to have like a six months, like some people say professional people who say start a business coaches, whatever, you should have six months worth of income in the bank. I mean, now. Right. Well, you know, or go get a job and work on your <laughs> business as yes. your side hustle. Um, in my particular situation, um, the way that teaching works where I'm at, um, yeah. you know, I, I resigned in May, but the salary, my my checks came all the way through the summer. So I Ooh. knew that. Yes. So I knew that I got paid in May. 
when I resigned, okay. I knew I was going to get paid in June and I knew I was going to get paid in July. Oh, there so you go. that was my cushion. Um, yeah. And I, so I, I was like, well, you have at least two months to find a job, you know, like, and, yeah, if, yeah. and I was thinking in my head, if, if something doesn't happen at that point, then I could find a side hustle that could support me. But it just worked out that I got, I got my first client that summer. So right on. then I just awesome. built from there. It yeah. is scary though, knowing that it you have an yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are there any resources or organizations you would recommend for, for female entrepreneurs specifically, or, or maybe even entrepreneurs in general? I noticed uh, you mentioned a networking group. Yeah. So would you recommend I mean, people to join a networking group? Oh, yes, absolutely. I, my business would not be where it is today without BNI is the networking oh, group okay. that I'm in. Oh, um, right and, huh? Oh, I said right on. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So BNI yeah. is Business Networking International. So they have yeah. chapters all over the place. So anybody can all join the world. up. Right. And you can look look it up and there's a chapter in your area. Um, and the way it helped me was I was introduced to like-minded business owners in my community, mm -hmm. which expanded my circle. And I was introduced to people that I would have never been put in front of if I were not have oh, wow. if I would not have been in that group. Um, yeah. So even if even if I wasn't getting all of the people in in the group as my business, if they were not becoming a client, they were introducing me to people that I would have never gotten you would in never front met. Of. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. So it's some some sort of networking group, but the only experience yeah. I have is with BNI. Oh, that's cool. Hey. Uh, just to shift gears here a minute, how, how do you envision everybody's talking about chat GTP and open AI and AI? And, and I mean, it's gotten the potential of, or it's gotten the uh, attention of Google uh, within, I think it took Facebook two years to reach 1 million users and it took chat, G, chat GTP uh, five days to reach <laughs> 1 million users. Uh, I was one of those 1 million, 1 millionth users on the fifth day. Cause that's when I joined it. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on, on, you know, how do you envision the future of AI in regards to social media marketing and, and its impact on the industry? You know, I think it's, I mean, I think it's something that's going to be very beneficial for social Absolutely. media, social media marketers. Um, I know there's all this talk about, is it going to replace me as a copywriter? Is it going to replace my job? And, you know, and I don't think, I don't think it is going to replace it for one, because AI does not have emotions yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it can't think creatively and no, you know it and can't that's, think on its own right it can't think of it on its own so um it, it's not going to replace copywriters um because copywriters are based on their creativity and their thoughtfulness exactly um, right but however i have used it i do use it um i think that it will only make copywriters better, make social yeah. media marketers better. Um, it's de definitely opening up a new world for oh, sure. It's yeah. And that's the thing is it, it uh, there's this saying for CRMs called garbage in garbage out, or maybe for anything, but if you put garbage in, into that input box, you're going to get garbage out. Like, yeah. You know, I've seen that with Jasper. Uh, I've seen it with uh, chat GPT and um, you ha a human being still has to input those things, right? And you know, I know there's a guy making a million dollars a month writing co sales copy for businesses, leveraging AI. And you have to be able to identify what good copy is. You know, if you don't yes. know what good copy is, like for instance, I don't use it for code, although I have. I've punched code in there and said, "Hey." Did you fix this code or, or whatever? I can't remember what it did, but it actually told me there was something wrong with the code. And it was code that was written by somebody else for a WordPress plugin. And wow. that person, that person, well, I won't say what that person, I won't say about it on camera. I'll say off, off camera. <laughs> um, anyway, the code isn't very good and uh, it needs to be updated and it was abandoned. And, uh, but the point I'm trying to make is I don't know how to code. So I don't know what to tell it to do to code, but I know what to tell it to do to get copy. That's for sure. And to get other things. Yes. And even in images, you know, with the image creation, like it's, I, I, like you said, I think it's going to accelerate and enhance Yeah. those of us who are creatives, not replace. Absolutely. Know? And doing things like this, AI is not going to replace me, like you and I having this conversation, but it's going to enhance right. what we do. 
Yes, so, absolutely. So I definitely so, see it as yeah. a an effective tool that can be used yeah. to enhance. So you, see, so you see it as an opportunity rather than a threat is what I'm hearing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Especially because, you know, with I do social media management and I do, I write all of the copy yeah. and, and even for things. websites. Huh? One of the most important things. Yes. And, and there, there is a lot of times, I don't want to say I get burnt out, but sometimes my brain cells are fried and yeah. I might need a little bit, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of something different said in a different way and, you know, put in some main keywords and yeah. kind of let it be like, okay, I, I got my groove back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, how do you think it will impact the way businesses approach social media marketing in the future? Well, it depends on if that business is doing it for themselves. Um, I I feel like social media marketers are safe in their jobs if they're the ones using it. I don't, I personally don't think that business owners will even tap into it. I'm not even sure if that's something that they will worry about. Yeah. You know, because the thing is, it's very interesting that you say that, Samantha, because here's the thing. I, I was in BNI as well. What I found was a lot of those people were good at what they did, but they weren't good at telling the world about what they did or how they did it <laughs> or what made them right. unique about doing it. They're a great plumber or maybe even an average plumber, to be frank, some of them, but they weren't very good at communicating to the world what their unique position was in the market or or in a way that and 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 you you and I just said it's 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 the inputs that you put in and they don't even know how to formulate the idea of the sentence to type in the input to get anything right. out right That's, and i'm not trying to be a jerk here it's just i'm a terrible architect i don't have mechanical inclination for Pete's sake i'll be on camera and say this my wife is the one who puts together the ikea furniture i have absolutely no mechanical inclination whatsoever <laughs> I can, but I can build you a very intricate marketing funnel with marketing automation and tag structure and and link attribution and all of those things. But don't ask me to build an IKEA bed or fix a car or even change a tire for Pete's sake. But you know, they're good at being a plumber, but they need someone right. like us to help them to communicate that. So that's, that's right. That's I that's one hundred percent true, and a yeah. lot of people, that's what they're looking for. A lot of my clients is they do their job and they do it well, but they don't know how to express to the world how well they do their job, (laughs) (laughs) you know? Yeah. Uh, And sometimes I have have a a few clients that will, they tell me what they, what they do. They give me a few key things and they're, and they literally hand it over and they say here. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. (laughs) So it's there. I don't even think they're interested in it because that's not what they're good at. You know, right. People stay with what they're good at. If they're not even interested in putting out that type of information and figuring out how to do it, then they're not even going to worry about it. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, in your opinion, what ethical considerations should businesses keep in mind when utilizing AI for their social media marketing efforts? Businesses or individuals such as ourselves. I mean, um, what I mean by that is like ethical considerations. Some people think that maybe using an AI and, and claiming authorship of it, like I don't think we should put, I used AI to generate this on every post or, or, or whatever. Or maybe there's some unethical things. I don't really know what unethical things people could do. I'm not that type of person. But um, again, if you'd rather not comment, you can plead the fifth. I give you permission to do that. Yeah. No, that, I mean, that's a very interesting question. And to be honest, yeah. I haven't really thought about it. But, you know, like we said earlier, you yeah. know, AI cannot project emotions or creativity. Yeah. It is something that is synthesizing information and it's generating it for you. You're putting in inputs and it's synthesizing this information. So I, yeah. I don't think it would, I mean, in my personal opinion, I don't, yeah. I don't think it crosses any ethical boundaries um, or something where you would have to say, I used AI to create this, yeah. <laughs> you know, this marketing funnel. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, honestly, I haven't really thought in depth about, that, but it's a, that's a good question. 
Yeah, no, that's great. It's um, I was just Googling something about it right now and trying to like maybe see if somebody else out there has some opinions on it as well. But Oh, I'm sure they do. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a guy who says, I wouldn't have a central AI group that has a division that does cars. I would have the car people have a division of people who are really good at AI. So that's, that's a very interesting statement. Yeah. That was by uh, Jason Furman. He's the professor of the practice of economic policy at the Kennedy School. And okay. a former advisor to President Barack Obama. Uh, anyway, so that being said, what's one big takeaway you want our listeners to get from this episode? Uh, if, from me or about social media? Yeah, no, from you. Yeah, yeah. One big takeaway. Maybe <laughs> one, one final point. thought of wisdom. That, oh uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> no final pressure. No, no pressure, Samantha. Uh, no pressure. Um, you know, I've done a lot of soul searching in the past couple yeah. of years, um, oh, and yeah. a lot of uh, I've done a lot of research on how to grow as a human being um, and how to expand my thinking um, and try to not keep myself or others in a box. Um, And I've also done a lot of personal development uh, because I feel like if you're not, well, in business, who you are as a person is going to be who you are in business. Uh, It bleeds over and you can't stop it. And so one thing, one thing that I would say is that, and for me and for people, whoever's listening, you know, personal development is something that should be constantly worked on. You can always get better at something um, all the time, whether it be small changes, always striving for growth, always striving for growth in one area um, and and see what that opens for you. It, it opens yeah. so many different avenues and worlds for you um, and open to ideas and new things. I think it's it's a beautiful thing when you can mesh your personal growth into your business growth. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. So that, 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 that is awesome, man. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here on the show today. How can our listeners connect with you and learn more about Allura Media? Oh, yeah. So um, Instagram is my favorite place. So you oh, can check okay. me out. <laughs> you can check is me out. Under your, are you on there on your personal handle and professional handle, like your your personal name and company name? Which one? It's, it is for? under my company name. So at Alora underscore media is okay. Instagram. My personal one is on there. I got hacked last oh, year. Oh, sorry to hear that. So I know. So somebody else actually has control of my old personal account. So I created a new and one. You can't get it back in. I can't get it back. Instagram. Oh, wow. Won't let me get it back. Anyway. So, so uh, okay. at Laura underscore media for Instagram. Okay. I'm also on Facebook, um, okay. Laura media. Um, okay, cool. I dabble in TikTok. I'm, I'm putting myself out there. So, oh yeah. Just hold on. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting to see though. Uh, a lot of people, not to go on and on, but people are, some people, well, I won't go there. I won't go there. I'll go there off camera. I will go there off camera. <laughs> Uh, and are you then, on Twitter uh, yet? Or are you, are you on, engaged on Twitter or anything? Or I was before, before, but um, I decided it was better for me to focus on a couple of platforms. You're right. Um, That's smart and thing be to really do. Versed in those platforms, um, yeah. but I have in the past, you know. Um, and then also my website, alluremedia.com. Yeah. Or well, YouTube. Or YouTube, but but okay. Not as, not yeah. as much. Not as okay. much. I was just curious. That's all. Yeah. Well, fantastic. We will make sure to put those in the show notes and uh, so people can find that information. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having no me. And I really enjoyed it. 